diving in. This time, we're going deep into a world that most people don't even know exists. Yeah, a hidden world, you could say. Islet insertion machines. Specifically, we're focusing on the S7000E model. Sounds pretty niche, huh? It might, but by the end of this, you'll be surprised how relevant it is. We've got the S7000E's technical specs, operation manual, parts, lists the whole shebang. Like a blueprint for building one of these things. Exactly. We get to see behind the curtain and understand how these complex systems work from the ground up. And trust me, they are complex, but also fascinating. Some of the details are mind-blowing, like how many eyelets it can insert at once and the speed. Well, you'll yeah. see. But let's back up a bit. Good idea. Start with the basics. What exactly is an eyelet insertion machine? What does it even do? Imagine having to place tiny electronic components onto a circuit board thousands of times a day with absolute precision. Okay, sounds tedious. Very. That's where the eyelet insertion machine comes in. It automates that process. Speed, accuracy, you name it. So like a robotic assembly line for those tiny parts. Precisely. And the S7000E. Well, it's a beast. Beast in a good way, I hope. Oh, absolutely. This machine can insert 13 eyelets at the same time. Whoa, 13 at once. That's impressive. And that's not all. It can process up to 190 printed circuit boards or PCBs every hour. 190 an hour, so in a typical workday. You're looking at 1,520 boards a day from just one machine. That's a lot of electronics being built. It's amazing to think that one machine could be responsible for parts in so many devices. Phones, laptops, you name it. But speed isn't everything. Of course, accuracy is crucial with electronics. And that's where the complexity of this machine really comes into play. So what's going on inside this thing? It's a symphony of moving parts. You've got servo motors, linear motion units for guiding movements, and of course, tons of sensors feeding information to the control system. I saw something about pneumatic cylinders in the parts list. What are those for? Those use air pressure for actions like clinching the eyelets onto the board, securing them in place. Ah, so like a high-tech staple gun. And speaking of high-tech, there's a laser in the parts list. What's that about? That's the laser position finder. It pinpoints the exact location of every component on the PCB, ensuring perfect placement. Wow, this is some serious technology. It is, and it's all orchestrated by an incredibly sophisticated control system. You've got big names involved here, like Panasonic for the PLC, which acts like the brain of the machine. Making all the decisions and coordinating everything. Exactly. Then there's Mitsubishi for the servo system, which is responsible for the incredibly precise movements of all the components. So it's like a well-choreographed ballet of machinery, all working together seamlessly. But there's still a human element, right? Someone has to operate this thing. Absolutely. And that's where the touchscreen interface comes in. The control panel for the operator. Exactly. It lets them input instructions, monitor what the machine's doing, make adjustments if needed. It's fascinating to see the human and machine elements working together. It's a powerful combination. But with so much power and precision, I imagine safety is a major concern. You're absolutely right. And that's actually where we'll pick up next time. This machine is capable of amazing things, but there are risks involved. Okay, I'm definitely intrigued. Let's delve into the safety aspects of this next time. So where we left off, we were talking about safety with a machine like this. Right, because it seems like there's a lot going on that could be potentially dangerous. Definitely. And the operation manual really stresses that. It has entire sections dedicated to precautions, potential hazards, you name it. Makes sense. So what are we talking about here? What are the specific dangers? Well, first of all, there's the obvious one, electrical shock. Right, high voltage and all that. Exactly. Any mistake could have really serious consequences. But it's not just electricity you have to worry about. There's also a risk of bruising from the moving parts. Oh, I see. Not just electrical, but mechanical hazards, too. Yeah, those components might be small, but they move with a lot of force. Enough to do some damage if you're not careful. Precisely. And then there's the laser. Oh, right. We talked about that before. Yeah. The laser position finder. Yep. The manual is very clear about not looking directly at it. Yeah, I can imagine that wouldn't be good for your eyesight. Not at all. We're not talking at a little laser pointer here. This thing could cause serious eye damage, even blindness. Wow. Mm. Okay, point taken. No staring at the laser. Exactly. It's a good reminder that even with advanced tech, you need to be aware of the risks involved. So it's not just knowing how the machine works, but how to operate it safely. Right, and the manual goes into a lot of detail about 
proper handling, installation, all of that. Like making sure you unpack and set it up correctly, ensuring the right air pressure. Oh yeah, because it uses pneumatics. Exactly. Even small details, like waiting a few seconds after turning it off and on again. Just to let the circuits initialize properly. Right. It's all about minimizing the chance of errors, ensuring everything runs smoothly and safely. So it's like a delicate balance using this powerful machine, but treating it with respect. I think that's a good way to put it. And that same respect applies to maintenance too. Ah, uh, the maintenance manual. We haven't talked about that yet. Right, because regular upkeep is key. You want this machine to keep running smoothly and for a long time. It's not just wiping it down and keeping it dust free, right? Nope, we're talking about the right lubricants, inspections, making sure everything is in tip top shape. It's like your car. You don't just drive it and hope for the best. You need oil changes, checkups, the whole nine yards. Exactly. Neglecting maintenance on a machine like this could have serious consequences. So it's a proactive approach, keeping things running smoothly to avoid problems down the line. Exactly. And the manual even specifies what lubricants to use for different parts. It's pretty detailed. Because using the wrong stuff could cause damage. Exactly. Different parts have different needs. And then there are the inspection schedules. Right, you mentioned those earlier. Checking things regularly. Yeah, they recommend daily checks on things like the belts, making sure they're clean, undamaged, properly tensioned. So they don't slip or break. Right. Then there are weekly things, like checking sensors for obstructions, making sure belts and pulleys are synchronized, and then monthly tasks, like greasing the linear guideways. Keeping those moving parts moving smoothly. Exactly. It's multi-layered with different checks at different times to cover all the bases. Sounds pretty comprehensive. Yeah. And I bet they explain why all this is important too. Oh yeah. They don't just tell you what to do, they explain the reasoning behind it. So you understand the why behind the what. Right. It's like, hey, this is how you keep this machine happy and healthy so it can keep making those high quality circuit boards we need. Makes sense. A well-maintained machine is a productive machine. Exactly. And reliable too. And that means we get those reliable electronic devices we depend on every day. Okay, so we've covered the inner workings of the machine, the safety aspects, the maintenance side of things. We've really gotten a deep dive into how this thing works. But I have to admit, I'm starting to wonder, what's it all for? We've gone deep into this machine, how it works, how to keep it running, but what's the bigger picture here? That's what makes it really interesting, actually. See this S7000E? It's not just some standalone piece of equipment. It's part of something much bigger. Exactly. It's like a cog in a global machine. This network of manufacturing, innovation, all the technology that shapes our lives. Okay, so we've got these circuit boards built with incredible precision. But what happens next? What are they actually used for? Well, think about all the electronics you use daily. Your phone, your computer, even appliances, cars. Almost everything has circuit boards these days. Right, and machines like the S7000E, they're essential for creating those boards. It's easy to take those devices for granted, never really thinking about how they're made. I know, right? There's this whole hidden world of technology behind those everyday gadgets. And the S7000E is a key player in that world. Absolutely. A real workhorse, quietly making those connections happen. And it's not just individual devices either, it's entire industries. Communication, transportation, healthcare, they all rely on this kind of precision. It's true. Every time you make a call, send a text, browse the internet, it's all built on these circuit boards made possible by machines like the S7000E. So next time I pick up my phone, I should think about how an S7000E mm -hmm. might have played a part in making that call possible. Exactly. It really shows how connected everything is, how these seemingly ordinary machines have such a huge impact. It's what I love about these deep dives, uncovering those connections seeing the bigger picture. It's all about exploration, that sense of discovery. There's always something new to learn. Absolutely. So to everyone listening, next time you see a piece of tech, take a second to think about its story, how it was made, what it took to get there. You might be surprised what you find.